Winner of a major is the undisputed best team in the world. Winning the major, that's everything. That's why we play, that's why we compete. Ready or not, here I come, you can't hide. is something added to your legacy. Winning a major in from the whole crowd, probably feel like a dream. Full clip, I'm a little bit sick, come equip. Look at what I did for the grid, got a name. Dreams come quick, all golden break, click, click. Tell about a stench in the air. Blood's on the ground, opportunity is here. Do you come in peace or should everybody fear? The audience got to line up. Oh my god! Absolutely crushing. You don't want to be a hero, do not let that thought process. We will put a bullet where your thoughts get processed. Crowd line, crushing SK.
going to be a lot of noise, he said. But then <laughs> he does the about turn, the heel turn, and then he says, it's going to be one quiet crowd tomorrow. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. First of all, Rain, you're stealing Fallen's material. I don't like plagiarism. But I don't know. I think Cloud9 have grown in this tournament. They got this swagger. They got that arrogance. They got that confidence. They're going to have a big thing to say about this final. They absolutely have it. They've had a difficult run to come to this point, you know, beating G2 in the quarterfinals. They were the most dominant team throughout the group stages, 6 and 0. Then in the semifinals, the juggernauts of SK. Don't mind those, you know, stand-in stories and all of that. SK is very hard uh, to put down at the majors. Yeah, and I mean, you have to realize this crowd is not going to be quiet, and they've already seen G2 go home. They've already seen SK go home. They've seen some massive juggernauts get wiped off this stage by this team. And if Cloud9 gets out to any kind of an early run, it's, it's not going to be quiet. And this is going to be hard to play against. This is a small arena. It, it gets loud. Oh, and it's got to be said as well that they're going to need this crowd, Sean, because if you look at meetings this year when they played each other, you can see Cloud9 have certainly not had the best of it. FaZe Clan seem to be their kryptonite. Yeah, but Cloud9 also had some struggles against G2 and SK in the past. They've overcome that. I think any doubts Cloud9 has is gone, and certainly any doubts this crowd ha has had were go are gone now. Cra the crowd is fully into it. They're backing Cloud9 completely, and uh, yeah, they're confident. I think the problem here is the fact that, you know, FaZe not only won the last three encounters in a best of 3-2 and 0, it's in such a dominant fashion, as you guys yeah. can see, only double digits two times for Cloud9, so they have no reason to be scared of anything, whether it's Cloud9, whether it's the crowd. Yes, Cloud9 is playing super well, but FaZe is the favorite here, and they're going to play like it. No doubt, Cloud9 have had that miracle run. They've beaten so many great teams that are above them in the world rankings. This is the final boss. This is the FaZe roster. Just look at this talent. It is so stacked. Yeah, I mean, these these all, we've said it so many times, so many of these players you could talk about as the best player in the world uh, at different points during their career, and, and together they have formed something truly special that even when they're playing poorly, they are still dangerous. They can win in so many different ways. When you add in the tactics, the structure that Kerrigan is providing, I mean, they can do it that way. If that goes if that goes poorly, they can win just by sheer individual skill. Nico, Olaf Meister, these guys are incredible at turning around disadvantaged situations, turning them into their favor. And it's not going to be easy. This is going to be another grind game for Cloud9. And that's it, Sean. Carrigan is a great in-game leader. But sometimes when he makes those mistakes and gives his opponents the window of opportunity, people can't capitalize because this team's just so good. Yeah, and that's what we've seen all tournament. FaZe has found themselves in early holes, and they can just dig themselves out. And honestly, the end score doesn't even look like they were ever contested. Yeah. But that, that's due to their skill. They're just overwhelming their opponents. Just the luxury that FaZe has compared to some of the other teams. They can get yeah. away with those mistakes because the skill bails them out so many times in pistol rounds, in force by rounds and so forth. And even though it hasn't looked great at times, FaZe score-wise has been very dominant. The only map they lost so far in these three weeks has been to Vegas Squadron on Inferno. And look, I'll tell you about FaZe. When they first came into the CS space, obviously known for other games, excellence in Call of Duty, they went out and they spent money. They bought these three guys, you know, spent so much to bring the likes of Nico, Guardian, Olaf Meister into the FaZe fold. And look at that. That's where your investment goes. The top-rated players out of four, they've got three. No, it's, it's absolutely unreal what they've been able to do. But I, I think that the point that you have to look is even with these, these kinds of players, there's still been weakness shown by FaZe, and that's what Cloud9 has to try and capitalize. We've seen some shaky halves. They're bailed out a lot by these three guys, obviously, in this tournament. But, you know, one, one slip up in a game, one game where they're playing a little bit less than they have been, and all of a sudden those weaknesses are really, really exposed, and that's where Cloud9 can take advantage. And Yanko, I'm going to bring you in here, because in 2017, it was Cold Zero that was the number one team in the, uh, player in the world. 2016, number one player in the world. Nico's always in that conversation, but Cold Zero has been a little bit of a nemesis. Well, he's starting 2018 the right way if he's going to break the trend. The top-rated player in the tournament. Absolutely, and the main thing that's holding him back is the fact that SK was the best team in the world, alongside Cold Zero being the best player. FaZe lost to them so many times in grad finals or just in playoffs or big, or big tournaments. So that's not just a turning point for Nico. It's also a turning point for FaZe moving on. If they can finally topple SK from that number one spot, 
then that will propel him into the title of the best player in the world. And show him, what do you rate him? Yeah, I think Nico is definitely climbing up there as the best player in the world. Like you said, it's between Cold Zero and him. And this kind of start to 2018 bodes well for his future this year. Yeah, it definitely does. Also on that team, Guardian. Somebody who's always in the Orping equation when it comes to having that conversation about who is the best in the world. Well, Guardian has been the best in the world, but despite that, has struggled to win those majors, been to finals, been to semifinals. People thought that maybe his time had gone, and now he's got this resurgence, this new opportunity in phase. It did seem like that. He had that section of his career where it seemed like he was a little bit less motivated to kind of, you know, stay and remain at the top. But I think if you look back, the incredible thing about what he's doing in phase right now is that the Navi lineups that he was in were incredible. At times, they looked like one of the best teams in the world. He's got a better cast around him now than he ever did in Navi. Yeah, like you had some great players on those teams, but when you get Olaf Meister, Nico, when you get Kerrigan as an in-game leader, like you get Rain, who's super underrated on this squad. He's not up there in the stats, but he's an incredible player. Everyone around Guardian now is going to make his job so much easier. Yeah, and it's got to be said as well, Olaf Meister, a decorated veteran yeah. with Fnatic, one of the best players ever to touch the game. He's chasing down, you know, that record that the other guys in Fnatic have. Flusher, JW, Pronax, all won three majors. Olaf Meister, only two. He can join his old colleagues, his old teammates, if he wins today. And I'll tell you what, I, I love the evolution of Olaf Meister. A very different beast to what he was in 2015 when he was the best player in the world. He's adapted his game. He's evolved. Yeah, I mean, he was a player that you could see just, just basically win everything. But the cool thing about FaZe is that he's almost like a targeted assassin on this team where if they're ever in a run, if they ever need someone to open something up, he just needs to get that one kill to really free up the other side of the map. He's obviously still a great player, but you need to remember in 2015, all of Meister had multiple spots on maps named after him because yeah. he had these signature moves, you know, on B platform, on cobblestone, all of just pushing straight through the smoke, trying to find yeah. the fight. Out of team mid on train, jumping to the left. All of Meister as well, searching for kills. So he's not that player in phase. It doesn't have to do as much, but it just speaks of the luxury they have as a team to have a guy like that and just like activate him whenever yeah. it yeah, needs it, to come to be. It's, it's shocking how much, you're reminding me, Olaf used to be aggressive in entry fire a lot, and he's completely changed up his game style. He's, very passive now and allows his teammates to shine. And he makes a lot of cere cerebral plays, often is lurking for FaZe now on this team and playing spots where he's often like second or third contact. So I really like how Olaf shaped up his game and he's a massive player for FaZe in getting information. Yeah, so look, we can wax lyrical about Olaf Meister or we can hear from the man himself. Earlier today, Smix talked to him in the Cheese It locker room. Hey, Olaf, congratulations again on the 2-0 yesterday over Navi. You guys are now in the grand finals, and I know for three of the players on phase, it's for the first time ever. So after you guys won yesterday, what was the mood like in the team? Uh, of course, we were all very happy. Uh, it's been a long time for me as well, so as you pointed out yesterday. So uh, it's just a lot of fun. We're happy to be here. And personally speaking for yourself, you're the only player on the team that's been a former major champion. You have two titles under the belt and now three are at stake here. So is the significance of that on your mind at all? Of course, but at the f I mean, the most important thing is to win. Then, then I consider that I won three. But of course, it will be very fun to win three and to join the, the likes of Pronax, JW and Flusha. Well, yesterday when I spoke with you, you said that I asked you to predict, and you said you thought SK would make it, but you hoped C9 would make it, and they did. So now that you're facing them, what are your thoughts on Skadaddy and his squad? Skadaddy. <laughs> uh, he's been uh, playing really good, and um, I mean, uh, I know that he's a really good player, but he hasn't really shown it before at the majors, but now he's been stepping it up a lot, so it's a lot of fun to see, and yeah, I mean, I'll see him out on the battlefield. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Olaf, and good luck in your match today. And there's a sinister smile on Olaf Meister's face when he says that. I will see you out on the battleground. As I said, he is supremely confident. He's right to be confident. This is a guy who knows what it takes to win. Yeah, he definitely is. The cool thing about this, um, he's just such a good, you can see how calm he is. He's just had so much experience in this, which is one of the great things we even touched on with FaZe. The amount of experience these guys have in big tournament environments on these stages. Um, and Olaf Meister in the majors has always been incredible. So he's got something in store. And I think if you, if you hear that interview and you're a Cloud9 player, you got to be a little bit worried because he didn't look like he cared whatsoever to be in, in this kind of an arena. And I agree, FaZe is a star-studded lineup. Great players on that team, but three of them are in a major final for the first time. And as a favorite, you do have some uh, amount of pressure on you. So having a guy like Olaf Meister, two-time major champion, just, you know, 
champion in general to have the experience to tell you through the game, guys, this is normal. Like we are going to lose some silly rounds that we perhaps don't even lose in practice. You know, it gets to you. Just keep playing your own game, keep doing your job, and we're going to come out on top. Yeah, and well, I think FaZe definitely benefits from having someone like Olaf Meister on the team to cool, calm everyone down. He, he pretty much has ice in his veins. The guy never shows pressure, a lot like Cold Zero actually in that aspect. So I think FaZe can benefit a lot from having someone like that. Well, we're going to find out what happens when the old guard runs up against a new school. They've got to take on Cloud9. Me and Sean have talked about him. We think this is the best iteration of Cloud9 we've ever seen. Tell us about him, Jason. Yeah, I mean, these guys are incredible. And I mean, the great thing about them, you have Tarek and Rush coming over from that old optic lineup that showed promise. They're kind of continuing that style of play, just relentless aggression and very, very quick takes of bomb sites and making sure they trade their way in. The nice thing is they have such an aggressive front line and guys like Tarek and Sui who are willing to to take risks, willing to just take battles, that Skadoodle gets to be much more passive, and so does Automatic, so does Rush. That's their normal habit. And this team has come together so nicely. They've got great change of pace. They're much better on, they have a much deeper map pool than you would have expected from this squad. And they've got a lot of dangerous elements to them. Yeah, and Sean, it, people have laughed about this idea as, of Skadoodle as being this support orb and doing all the support work, but they've got a team that's just full of firepower. It's probably the only conceivable way it could work, right? Yeah, it's definitely the only conceivable way a team like that could function, and Scott actually does a fantastic job of it. He's so yeah. good with utility, and what makes him even better at this is his late round play. He's constantly making good decisions in clutch situations, and he's lethal in those late rounds. And he is one of the players who's been struggling the most when it comes to playing versus FaZe. To be fair, a lot of players and teams struggle playing against him, but you can see in the results that Cloud9 has had so far, a reverse sweep, right? Like we talked about it, same yeah. as in Cologne. And they make the Grand Finals yet again. Last time versus SK, they lose. Will they be able but, to change the but outcome? But look who they have now? beaten. They've beaten those top four teams, you know? You've gone through Astralis. You've gone through G2. You've gone through SK. This is a hard route to the final. And you've beaten Vegas Squadron, who FaZe couldn't beat, so might as well pack it in right now. Turn this already <laughs> over. If only it was uh, resolved that way. Uh, and look, the players they've got here, sure, they haven't been as spectacular in terms of statistics as FaZe has, but they have got two in the top ten. And I think what we've seen from Cloud9 is this kind of team effort, you know? They've been they've been really even across the board when they play, and it's 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 just so nice. I, I want to touch on Skadoodle specifically because earlier in his career we saw him. I mean, Sean, you know, there's definitely playing with him. He loved being in the thick of the fights inside bomb sites. He was so good and so creative at jumping around and his mobility around smokes and everything. Now he he gets to just sit back and he makes it so easy because you guys got you have guys like Tarek, um, Rush at times and Stewie flushing people out of these positions when they're so aggressively attacking a bomb site. The defense is scattering and they're trying to fill the gaps, and that's where Skadoodle has really found a niche for this team is just picking off that one or two guys who are trying to come through a choke point. Yeah, and the man at the top of that list, Rush Yanko, I think he's had an amazing major. Finally starting to bet in, starting to look like he belongs in Cloud9. It was a little bit shaky when they got him from Optics. They couldn't really find a position for him, see what he was best at, but they finally found that role. Definitely, and you can see, I think it's the best example, his performance of how much this lineup of Cloud9, how much confidence they have in, in what they're capable of, because even a guy like Rush, who's usually very reserved with his play, uh, mostly supports his teammates, doesn't take huge risks. Even he is going for some plays now, you know, he's feeling it. He knows that even if he messes up, it's not the end of the world. He's got great guys uh, behind them that can easily make it up. Yeah, Rush, it, it feels so good that Rush is finally getting the credit he deserves. He's such a yeah. smart player in the game. He's, like Yanko said, he's very reserved both in-game and out of game. He's not a streamer like Tarek or Stewie is. So oftentimes he, he gets overlooked and he does get criticism for his play when he plays bad because of that. But this tournament he's stepped up in massive ways. And he's looking to take that here to the finals. Yeah, and of course, Cloud9 do have an ace up their sleeve. It's that man there on the camera, Tarek. People have joked about him. There was a meme online saying that this guy didn't have the intellectual capacity to be an in-game leader. He has proven everybody wrong and then some. And he's fragging all the while while doing it. Look at that. He leads his team on ADR. Listen, I was one of his doubters early on as well. This has been a three-year journey for Tarek to get to this level. So much skill was shown at the early stages when he joined CLG initially. He never really 
either couldn't really put it together in, in terms of a team framework. And now coming over here, again, criticized him for coming in as the in-game leader. Didn't think he'd be able to do it. And much like Stewie, he's, he's stepped up to pretty much every challenge that's in place in front of him since he got to Cloud9. Now you're seeing him take the initiative, the fights. He's changing the pace. He's solo taking map control for his team. He's doing so much, and he's becoming the star that everyone in North America crowned him to be way too early, but he's become it now. Yeah, and Sean, you know, you're an in-game leader, and you know how hard it is to be able to put the numbers up while you've got to watch all the moving parts of the team. Yeah, it is beyond impressive what Tarek has done in this event and leading up to this event, actually. His numbers have been fantastic. Not only that, cloud Nine's setups on CT side, they're running a lot of bait setups. They're switching up setups. They're adjusting to, to what they're seeing from other teams. T side, they're very aggressive. And I think that stems from Tarek's individual play. So I, I, I do think they're going to show that aggression in the finals today. And I don't know if FaZe is going to be ready for it. Well, we'll find out. But before we do that, obviously, we've talked a lot about the talent, the firepower that's on this roster. I think it's going to be a tactical game, too. And with that said, that means it's time for Map Tactics, presented by the US Air Force. What have you got for us, Yanko? So talking about Tarek and how much he's evolved as an in-game leader and as a player, he's an example from the semifinal last night that we saw versus SK Gaming. And Cloud9 is on match point, and you're thinking, yeah, it's a done deal, but never against SK. You know, you can never really count them out. 15-9, they've made this come back before and they have a double up setup a lot of utility you can see fallen gets a kill through the wall gets a tag as well so cloud nine still has the confidence they don't care we, we have a call we want to go b we're gonna set up they have all the players there as you can see two defenders fallen with the awp fur with the m4 this is something they've been doing a lot playing towards ct towards ruins not too close in the bomb site so that they can potentially get a kill through the smoke and wait for the retake. You can see what Cloud9 actually does is they push through their own smoke in CT. This is something that's very uncharacteristic. I don't think I've seen it uh, done this tournament. And if Catch has fallen completely off guard, he dies, automatically picks up his day WP and closes out the round from there. Fur as well, he was being pinched from two sides, but couldn't even get a single kill and the round completely falls apart for SK Gaming, and you know, I think that's the biggest problem for teams who have allowed comebacks versus SK. They just get scared a little bit. They start playing not to lose. Cloud9 was definitely playing to win throughout that game, and, and this particular execute shows it. And it's like I said, they're gonna need to do that here. I want Stewie pushing through those smokes. That's how he made a name for himself. That's how he infuriated <laughs> most of the NA scene when he came through. People didn't believe this player was legit. If he does that in a major final, it's gonna be a sight to behold. But there's one other factor in all of this. We've talked about it. I don't know if you've ever played in a crowd this big. Jason Just now, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you yeah. did actually. I'll tell you the other day. I know you did it a bunch of times, Sean. Uh, and I will tell you, crowd does make a difference. When you've got a crowd behind you, they're cheering you on. They're letting you know that the mistakes don't matter. It's going to be all right. And they're intimidating the opposition, Sean. As a seasoned pro, tell me about it. Yeah, it gives you a certain electricity to your team that, that fuels you. It, it ignites fires within you. It makes you more comfortable to make those aggressive plays. And when, they, when the crowd is behind you cheering, you, you want to keep doing it. And Cloud9 loves rolling with that confidence like that. So I think it, it will play a part today. There's a, there's a couple of cool tricks as well you can play in terms of um, when the crowd is getting so loud and you can't really hear the in-game noise, like, you can let go of the shift key. Like, you don't have to walk everywhere like we see players do online when it's quiet in their bedroom. We're going to see a lot of aggressive plays in every situation just because footsteps are just automatically masked yeah, by crowd yeah. noise. So something I did once before, actually, at a, at a previous IM event where we, we had the American crowd behind us is you get up as an in-game leader, you get everyone to scream, and you just full rush somewhere. Yeah. The comms <laughs> from the other team are so hectic, they can't hear what the other person's saying because everyone's screaming in the background. So fast strats play to the home, the home team. I think it's definitely a two-edged sword because these games, it's such a high level of play that it, come, it becomes a chess match, right? And let's say someone wins a crazy 1v3, but the, the reality is your opponents still have a lot of money. They're just going to rebuy. It's a reset round for you. Guys are getting up, you know, standing up from their chairs. Everyone's cheering them on. You know, if you don't take a timeout, freeze time is gone. You just got back into your chair. What are we going to do? And the other team is perhaps <laughs> already making a play. You know, I, I think it's right. pretty... I think it's pretty difficult at times to, you know, keep your mind in the game. And these guys are uh, rookies when it comes to playing playoffs uh, at the major on the big stage. Well, they had a strange map veto against SK Gaming. We were scratching our heads. It worked out for them. What are we going to see today, guys? All jump in. I think the vetoes are going to be pretty clear cut. For Cloud9, it's Nuke. For FaZe, it's going to be Cobblestone. But after that, things get 
much more interesting. I, I think the question for Cloud9 is whether they're going to pick something like Mirage or, or Train. I mean, both of those yeah. maps are going to be very happy with. Obviously, Mirage got to be feeling very comfortable on at the moment. Yeah, I feel like they have to pick Mirage. I feel like Cloud9 has no choice but to pick Mirage based on all of their success throughout this tournament. We have to see Mirage out of them. For FaZe, it's a little bit tricky. I mean, you look for them to go to Overpass. They've had so much success against Cloud9 in the past. And yeah, there we, there we have the, there the, we have the Mirage. The bit. thing is, FaZe has shown a lot of confidence in, in their train because they've, they've been working a lot on it. And they've had sometimes picked maps, not caring how good their opponent is on it, just feeling like they have the advantage. So here, I would advise them not to pick train because I believe it's with uh, Mirage, Cloud9's strongest map, and they do go for overpass, which is where they should have a big advantage. Again, though, we've seen some good things out of Cloud9 on overpass. And if you're FaZe, I mean, neither of these maps, really, these teams got to feel too comfortable in this kind of situation. They're all good enough on it. And overpass really lends itself to how aggressively Cloud9 is able to take bomb sites. They have very, very good counter flash setups for the defensive side and great executions on the T side as well. Yeah, and that's really smart out of FaZe right there. I, I know Yanko said they have been working so much on train. We, they have to ban it there against Cloud9. And we see Inferno as the third map. Same thing as against SK. That's a very interesting decision at the very end from Cloud9 to go for Inferno over Cash for FaZe. That's been, since this roster formed, probably their best map. You know, played it a lot of times in, in big games. So I think they're definitely going to feel uh, comfortable getting what pretty much is the three best maps for FaZe. Yeah, and you can see Cloud9 there, very good record on Mirage, supremely confident. We saw them do a number on SK, very dominant performance. We need to react to this veto, contextualize it. Let's start talking about some predictions. I'm going to start with you, Sean. Yeah, this is definitely a very hard map pool for Cloud9. Um, these are all maps that actually Rain thrives on on CT side, and he's a big player that comes up huge constantly in big games for FaZe. So, uh, with that being said, I think Cloud9 can ride the momentum here and they'll take the Series 2-1. I think for FaZe having CT on Mirage being the first map, Cloud9 really likes to go with a faster pace there. And that might be beneficial for them if they get into the game hot and get off to a strong lead. But I just believe looking at the pool and seeing how FaZe again got three of their strongest
think Cloud9 is, is a really good team. They have a lot of potential to become, become a top contender. FaZe Clan is one of the best teams out there right now. We're going to prepare for them like we prepared for SK, like we prepared for G2. They haven't won a single final or best of three game against us since we are in this lineup. We're going to two serve them as usual. We're going to show up and really show to the world what Cloud9 is made of. I actually have a lot of confidence that we're going to win this major. I think teams are starting to recognize that, you know, we are a world-class team and that we are here to play. And, uh, you know, FaZe knows that it's not going to be a walk in the park. Welcome, ladies and gents, to the E-League Major Finals. This is the Boost Caster Desk. I'm DDK. I'm joined by James Bardolf, or God Squad Bardolf. I'm not sure if that's what you're going by now, but I am so excited. I am really looking forward to this final. Cloud9, you have to say, are definitely an underdog, but I have them as a favorite. They've been so strong in the recent matches. I think they're going to really bring it. We know they're not a five-man team. They're a six-man team. I think Valens has got junk in the trunk. We saw some nice um, strats from them on Mirage before. So things like throwing smokes towards A, but with a double stack, so it lands faster, so it's less telegraphed, there's less time to react. They're paying attention to the small detail, and I think that will make a difference in this match. I, I agree completely. That was always something missing. All right, this is a completely new Cloud9. Boston, it's time! Cloud9 will be starting on the T side. You heard what Sean said about noise. Make some noise in this bitch! All right, Cloud9, a small amount of utility to work off of. So keeping things slow for the time being. We see FaZe trying to send the feelers out, trying to get that information. But there's nothing for them so far. They don't want to overextend. Cloud9 is waiting it out. So many options available to them. Automatic and rush. Again, when you see two Ts towards A at the beginning of a round, it's very telling. It's almost always A in that situation. Cloud9 waiting for an overextension. A very slow pistol round so far. Hopefully this doesn't mean that Cloud9 are going to pay too much respect to phase as this series continues. Cloud9 and the team have been so strong on Mirage so far. One minute on the clock, and now Russian Automatic are moving away from the A bomb site. So he's been holding an angle towards B this entire time. Cloud9 are going to walk to catch up with him, not to give anything away. They still have all the grenades. They could go for um, the short pillar smokes, for example. They've got two smokes. They've got a Molotov as well, which is probably for the van. So let's see. They're very close, so uh, very likely to be the Wall of Smoke at the front. Bouncing off the invisible ceiling, and here comes the push. This is going to be big. Cloud9 diving through the window there, out the balcony. That's the first obstacle overcome. Caravan is down, and Cloud9 firmly plant the flag on the B-bomb side. But Olaf Meister, he's waiting to be unlocked. He's waiting to be activated. Rain must survive in this position. He's the only one from the marketplace. They have to be able to split with him. The team play has to come in for them to break this. That's a good start there from Olaf Meister. Now Rain can come out from the market, but he's shut down by Tarek. Automatic's in there. But be careful with these peaks, though. And that's it. Phase only one man stands, and not for too much longer. Cloud9 win the pistol round on Mirage. What a way to kick off the grand finals. Wall of smoke on the pistol round after a very patient play. A focused Cloud9 here. That is very bold, just sweating out FaZe for so long. I almost wondered if they were just paralyzing their seats. I'm not sure what's going on, but as you can see, it's all the small details, and that's something we'll be continuing to look at, as James mentioned. But now it's time for FaZe to try to fight back here. We don't have a full force fight, both Guardian and Olaf Meister leaving money in the tank, and that's going to be for the AWPs, w, double AWPs, very quickly, as soon as Olof, they can. Olaf actually just bought late. I think he forgot ah. to buy Kevlar, so I think he went back and bought some late. So it will be just Guardian saving for the sniper rifle. So now let's see what the anti-force buy is like for Cloud9. They'll take early possession of the upper area of mid, and Stewie's keeping an eye on the bottom, so they'll make sure there's no uh, crazy pushes from FaZe Clan. But now they need to figure out where the FaZe Clan are. How many are towards A? How many towards B? Look at the information that Olaf Meister's got. He doesn't necessarily need to push beyond this position for the time being, but his teammates might poke and prod a little bit, see what's going on. We see Rain and Nico playing close to the ramp, and Rush is keeping an eye on things towards A. Carrigan has a pretty good position here in the window, or the ladder room, sorry. Automatic is going to go for the challenge, although Carrigan has since repositioned. So Automatic gaining ground here, but if he doesn't anticipate Carrigan's position, there could be problems here. But the peak, the timing for Carrigan, not ideal. He won't go down just yet, but the information's there. The grenade's out, and Stewie takes down Guardian in the meantime. Right now, Cloud9 have all the information for the site push. 
Nico and Rain have pushed A and Olaf Meister is flanking from the same position, but now he's going to rotate back towards mid because obviously that's a waste of time. We've got Carrigan in A. If he goes down, then the bomb can be blasted. It's still exposed though. Nico playing to win the round rather than stop the blood. But that's not going to work out. And there it is from Stewie. That one was for the crowd. Rain and Olaf Meister remain. Not much to be done. Maybe I can see the weapon away, or maybe not. Cloud9 looking sharp at the moment. Yeah, this is so crucial. This these rounds can very, very often result in two, three, sometimes even four deaths on the T side. And that, of course, really has a massive impact on your economy. But this really shows, again, how detail-oriented Cloud9 are. They've taken every step, every measure, very disciplined approach in a round where sometimes you might see overextensions. But they are looking for a clean round here, and they're very likely to get it unless Olaf Meister is able to find Rush, who is quite low around the corner. It looks like Olaf will hold on to the Deagle and the Kevlar for the next round, but his teammates will be bare. USP round from FaZe Clan. This is a time for Cloud9 to make some money. Very few rounds so far, but it looks very, very promising indeed for Cloud9. Very, very focused. And I can't wait to see what comes on the buy rounds. They know Guardian's gonna be on the AWP, and I think Guardian is going to be a massive problem for Cloud9. I think he's the man who wins this map for FaZe if they are to win it. So I'm very curious to see what Cloud9 will have in mind. You see uh, Olof's teammate there deliberately blocking the smoke to try and give him a gap in the smoke. But it won't quite work out for them. Three people spamming through the window. Now it's anti-eco time for Cloud9. Once again, they will slowly take the mid area. They give FaZe Clan time to run up mid while they have the uh, positions further back towards the entrance to B. Doesn't happen, so again, Cloud9 very meticulous at the moment. Got to minimize your mistakes in the grand finals of a major. Yeah, this is really a great start for them. I'm very, it's very encouraging to see this out of Cloud9. And again, the last eight times they faced each other in big tournaments, Cloud9 has not won a single time, but this is a new Cloud9. Oh, that's a great shot there from Olaf Meister to kick things off for FaZe. But again, FaZe are sorely lacking Kevlar and weaponry, and Cloud9 know it. They will start to make the move now. It's a 4v4 into that A bomb site. FaZe will be able to potentially get some engagements, but they just have USPs. Great timing for Cloud9 as they take the site. 45 seconds remain. They don't, have to, they don't have pressure to plant the bomb. They can have room for error correction and so on. FaZe trying to do what they can over the smoke. But again, this is the pistol rounds, and the big rounds are yet to come. Olaf Meister, can he get anything out this round? Yes. Two versus three, Guardian down to four HP, Guardian gone. Olaf Meister may be rotating, perhaps to save his Kevlar, perhaps to pick up a fallen weapon, perhaps just to try and get a better situation. Automatic, no fear from the man. But it's time for the buy round for both teams. Very important damage done by Olaf Meister there. It's, of course, right after the round where Cloud9 were able to survive with five players. So, with this all piled onto Guardian, it all could change, but Skadoodle has been having a hell of a tournament has the AWP out as well. Cloud9 so far have been very impressive with their use of utility around the map to clear space, to make plays safe. And they'll be looking here to continue in that fashion up against this firepower from FaZe. Guardian had a, had a good spawn to make it to the window, and here he is. I'm not sure what that face was for, but doesn't get anything top mid just yet. Cloud9 will offer the grenade, and now FaZe are forced away from mid already. They don't know what's going on then. Right now there isn't much. So Cloud9 may be able to afford extra men elsewhere. Guardian rotating towards CT in case of a fast play. Three towards A so far for Cloud9, and they will trade very early. So four on four, one minute 20 on the clock, and not that much information for FaZe. They know two people were towards the A site, so that might be an A read for them, but there's no rotation just yet. Yeah, they're taking basic precautions. One of the issues is that they've burned all of their utility. There's a single flash on Guardian, and that's uh, he's playing Ticket Boost. We could potentially flash for Nico for a peek there, and that's going to be the case. There's the flash. The peek is going to reveal nothing here for FaZe. So now with this much time on the clock, they have to start and question what is the best setup because they have no idea what Cloud9 are up to. And now that's info for Cloud9. They know there was a pop flash. They know there are two towards A. Very likely Guardian is in CT. One smoke for Cloud9 onto Skadoodle, so they may try to clear that position, but Cloud9 not afraid to play the clock at the moment, and FaZe have to start to wonder. They've got such little info. Olof Meister wishes that window was broken. He could make it to the bricks, but he can't see anything. Such a late boost coming in, but oh, finally he's got the information. Olof Meister, one player taken down, 20 seconds now, and they still haven't pushed the A site. 
This is going to be very, very tight. They cannot afford a single mistake here. If a single shot goes awry, that's a problem. Good trade out from Skadoodle, but it might be too little, too late. That's a good no-scope there from Skadoodle, but he still needs to get the bomb down. Oh my god, he might be able to do it. Skadoodle is fast, but it's not fast enough. Carrigan in with the save. The damage was extreme. Down to the last man, Faze. It's a great start from Faze in the fight round. An expensive one, but an important round for them. And even though Faze had that pop flash early on and they didn't see anybody in the rack, you see Skadoodle had to run through a smoke. That smoke was thrown by the CTs earlier on. So they were able to hold on to that smoke and really ruin the timing. But what a play from Skadoodle, a man who sometimes comes under criticism. That's a great way for him to start win or lose. That is some very exciting stuff. If he keeps that performance up, this is going to be one hell of a game. That is for certain. Now, the economy for both teams is incredibly stretched. As such, this becomes a very, very important round. So, we're going to see aggression out of phase, diving down into the underpass. Cloud9 smoked off. He can't really see too much. Olaf, though, able to outplay Stewie in that underpass. This is huge. They have to hold on to these four positions. He's going to push into the B apartments to stay safe. Cloud9's response, very fast push to B. Yes, but the bomb is alone. Regardless of what happens here, you've got Olaf Meister and Nico in the apartments, and the bomb is at the back. So if they stay in this position, they've got to find the kills. Cloud9, Olaf Meister has to die, and he does. That's the path open for the bomb. But Guardian is on the site. We've seen him do ridiculous things on overpass. Have they detected him? He scopes in. He can't unscope now because that would be too many sound cues. Rush moving in. He's going to have a nasty surprise. There's Guardian on the site. His teammates here as well. Rain, can he, he can make it through the door. The smoke is down. One minute on the clock. Two on two, all on the B bomb site. AWP on both sides. Who's going to find the angle first, though? Trying to use the time to their advantage. Ooh, the angle! So close! Skadoodle lands the shot. There's just one more left. And again, time is riv with rain right now. The T's must go for the plant. He knows that will create a 1v1 situation. He goes for the peak. Skadoodle's ready for everything. What a start to the match from the American sniper. Skadoodle again. And this time it's enough. He really wants that interview with Sue at the end. He wants a W for his team. Is this the run, Skadoodle? You tell us. Four to one. FaZe Clan get reset very early on. Look at him, seek and destroy. He's a predator. Nasty stuff from him. That's such a fast flick as well. Wow. To turn to, to turn, he basically had his crosshair almost perfect. The minimal correction afterwards. Really nice stuff. Pistols for FaZe Clan. We've seen good timing on these anti-ecos, anti-force buys from Cloud9 already. And it should continue here. Automatic kicks things off well towards middle. That's a good start. And Tarek will go down in the palace, but Nico is known in this position and it's highly susceptible to grenade work from Cloud9. Although Nico did pick up a Molotov, that will slow down the refrag attempt from Rush. So things do get a little bit strange here, but still, middle control is there. Stewie's going to be able to capitalize as Automatic presses the issue through connector. A lot of information discovered here, but ooh, Automatic, good continuation spray. Guardian falls for that one and Stewie goes down towards market. There might be a chance for FaZe after all. Yeah, this is getting a bit weird for Cloud9 now. Weapons are on the floor. Nico's picked up an AK and he's got Kevlar. That in, in itself is a problem. Automatic of all of 4 HP, trying to play the smartest game he can, and there it is! That significantly weakens things. Nico, will he be entertained in the middle area, or will he make his way towards B? The bomb's only making it in now. Cloud9 really needs to get that down before Nico makes his way in. You know someone's probably holding the window. He's shoulder peeking. He baits the shot and gets past the angle, but he's going back. He wants them to readdress, but Skadoodle is on fire. Eight to one at the moment. It's great to see from Nico as well to have the confidence to say, you know what, Skadoodle will retake this angle. I'm going to 1v1 him. I know that I have to get the kill on him straight away. The apartments play is usually one of the biggest problems in those spots, so it's pretty smart stuff and a great show of confidence from the man Nico. Right now, FaZe, it can't seem to get going against Cloud9. We're seeing remarkable plays back to back from the North American side. Once again, they play against Pistols. And that's a good start. Skadoodle opens it up well, gets the information, and he's not going to miss a single shot. Three men left in this round for FaZe. For those of you on GoTV, Skadoodle. There's only one man to watch right now. Cloud9 eliminate them one by one. This is a nothing round for FaZe Clan. But Nico manages to get a kill out. And uh, maybe there's a chance for an AWP to be collected. Or maybe not. Cloud9 are everywhere at the moment. Six to one and FaZe Clan 
are heading towards their next buy. Guardian's going to be on the AWP. They'll have a reasonable amount of grenades, but we might see some more aggression from FaZe Clan. But they can't afford too many errors in this situation, otherwise Mirage may melt in front of their eyes. And this is an amazing position for a team like Cloud9 to be in, because this early round scenario is very clear how the money of your opponents is. And that allows you to make better decisions, as it's easier to read the CT setups. Now, FaZe have already tried aggression in the middle once, didn't work out for them. More passive round, and would you look at this, Dewey opting for a Mac 10 for the fast plays, the speed. Rush picks up the frag there, in towards A. Absolute madness here on the A site, and just like that, it's gone. The numbers game working very well for Cloud9. They are everywhere. Surprising these players with these executes. Olaf Meister trying to do what he can. Two versus four. At what point do they run and save? Maybe it's now. Carrigan, though, he's still in CT. He really wants to kill. Looking for a player on the barrels. But automatic gets taken down. What is the rest of this hold for Cloud9 going to look like? Stewie's on 5 HP. He's got to be careful. That Molotov's probably going to kill him. Making his way for honor. Oh, Skadoodle there. He's in the red as well. But Skadoodle's still alive. Is the trade there for Cloud9? Yes, it is. Rush shuts it down. Picks up the AWP as well. 7 to 1, Cloud9. When do you see this level out of Skadoodle? He just doesn't seem to miss a single shot. It is very incredible right now. I can't believe my eyes when I'm watching this guy. It's such a transformation considering you know, his performances in previous months. Lifted by the stage, lifted by the crowd, Cloud9 are off to a phenomenal start. Hashtag Vuvuzela, I respect that. We have a tactical timeout at the moment, which has just expired, so we will soon be back into the game. Face Clan, two to three thousand dollars. Nothing but pistols once again for this team. This is the pick of Cloud9. Overpass is to come. FaZe Clan, 1-7, to seven, not the start they wanted. In a weird way, I think this crowd will actually give them energy as well, but not when they're getting wrecked. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely been a hard time, and just Cloud9 the individually, they've been so stunning, and it's so hard to deal with the aggression, and also decisiveness from them has been a big difference. And here it is, quick push there from Stewie. Easy frag into the B-bomb site. There's no fear right now from Cloud9. Guardian smells a rat. Sorry, Automatic smells a rat. And the rat is Guardian on this occasion. Trapped in a corner and exterminated. And Cloud9 are making a lot of money at the moment. We get into that situation, that kind of Vega Squadron scenario where you can't win one round now, FaZe Clan. You've got to win three in a row. Otherwise, we're looking at something like an 11-1 score very quickly indeed. You start to wonder if these players are feeling the pressure. They know they are some of the best players in the world. And they will fully expect to win this in dominant fashion. Now we see the double snipers. It's Carrigan with the second one. Might be spawn base potentially. We'll have to see how this plays out. He's going to short, I believe, all the uh, B apartments. Looks like B apartments for Carrigan. But it will be a quick play into the A site here. Cloud9 setting up a very, very fast play with Nades running straight through there. No qualms about it, no messing around. And Guardian gets a first defensive shot, but they are smoked off. They must play retake now. And CT's been left open. Rain and Nico getting the kills. This is a problem for Cloud9. Two versus five. They haven't got a single kill yet. The flashbang comes in high, but Rain takes the shot before the flash goes off. Automatic now. One versus five. Two fast flashes. Guardian through the smoke. Will not wait any longer. FaZe Clan are on the board, surviving with three players. But we know Cloud9 are falling over their own cash at the moment. And just as you mentioned before, this is such a pivotal moment. FaZe must, must string rounds together because they will quickly run out of money otherwise, and we'll see a very, very dominant scoreline from Cloud9. It may be too much to overcome in this map. Very nice shot there from Guardian. He's been in incredible form this tournament. Tactical timeout once again. It's time for Cloud9. Okay, FaZe have had some short success. And we noticed as well, there was an interview with Cloud9 where they spoke about making fast plays and not allowing their opponent to really react to what they're doing. And we've seen that so far. But we've also seen their A executes with the double stack with Tarek throwing those fast um, smokes towards A, so those are still to come. They say they have a deep strat book, and maybe we'll see it in this grand final. This really is a great map for Cloud9 to start off on, especially on the T side as well. It's always been a good one in their books. 
Let's see if they'll have a different approach here. We have a default at the moment, which means they're spreading across the map, taking a lot of map control, gathering as much information, information as they can, and creating as much map presence as they can. You can see that the CTs, they started with three in the B bomb site and they broke the window early, which means Olaf Meister can sit on the bricks inside um, CPL, which means he can see people if they make their way into connector from mid later on. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Still around here from Cloud9 as a quick flash goes in to try to force Kerrigan off the angle. But not only that, it's about creating threats again. Right now, the idea for FaZe is they really want to know as much as possible to understand, okay, where is Cloud9 going to go on the map at the moment? But they have opted not to go for any forward plays, and they're playing a little bit in the dark. So they'll have to rely on their defensive setups and clutch plays on the side. Kerrigan, he's in a very important spot there. Should he be pushed? He needs to hit that first shot. That's his job at the moment. There's going to be grenades to try to deal with this. To try to throw Carrigan off. Can he hit the first shot? Very good grenades here from Cloud9 to deny Carrigan. Wall of Smoke once again, and they are isolated. Phase clan of Carrigan alone. Are they offering a double fake now? Stewie, in the meantime, has made his way through the underpass and automatics come out on the window, so they're going to try and pull him away from B, but Phase clan non believers, they've still got around three people there, but the smokes are still high on the short position, so Carrigan's alone again, but finally they dissipate, and Olaf Meiss is there, and Nico now delivering a kill in the middle position, so they're running out of players, Cloud9, but so are the CTs. There are eight seconds, the bomb has to go down, but it's on the floor. There's no way Cloud9 can win this round. They're surrounded, it's too late. They're going to lose by timeout. Can they stay alive? No. Olaf Meister from the short position. And you wonder if Cloud9 make it, made it too complicated there. And also credit to FaZe Clan. FaZe Clan decided that they would play very passively. They would test Cloud9 in this position where they don't try to take early map control against the T side. They don't try to pressure mid. They just sit on their, def their defensive setups and they say, hey, you guys have to come to us. We're not going to give you any peaks. And Cloud9 are forced to run an execution of a set piece. They went for it and they didn't have enough time. So this is now Cloud9 having to readjust their pace into this round to better accommodate the more passive approach from FaZe. It makes me wonder what they have in store for Overpass. A CT smoke on the short position, a boost up. Olofmeister, has he seen Automatic? Who wants to make his way into the ladder position, but Tarek may run distraction as well. Nice spray there from Rain through the smoke, and seems FaZe Clan have adjusted to the plays from Cloud9, so Cloud9 may have to mix it up. Five versus three now, and FaZe are firmly on the comeback trail. Nico able to stay alive with the smoke there. Two players stuck in this position. Tarek goes straight in there, though. One more player to find. Connector, that's the job to do, but Tarek can't do it. Olaf Meister dancing the dance against Skadoodle, a dangerous one at that, and it's one that FaZe will win. They're back in this one now. They've been able to string some rounds together. Four on the board. It's still not looking amazing, but still quite a few rounds left in the half. They could still get that 7-8 finish. Definitely. Cloud9's money has started to run out. They're about 3,500 now on each player, and that's not good enough for a buy. Guardian delivering once again, so Cloud9 going for another play towards A, but not quite working out. I think there has been a clear adjustment from uh, FaZe, a realization of what Cloud9 was trying to do, and not really giving them what they wanted. So now FaZe can get that fifth round on the board. Pistols and the scout onto Tarek is uh, pretty much what they have to offer. He's making his way to the chair position, and Guardian's doing what he always does in the meantime. Ooh! Well, that is a shot and a half from Guardian. Very nice. Tarek, though, able to show some shenanigans with that scout as well in the middle position. Stewie looking for an opportunity here. Finds the timing. Shut down by Carrigan. Each approach taken by Cloud9 in this round. Not really finding too much success, but again, you can't really blame them. Haven't had too much to work with. It's good all trying to get some extra damage in, but that's not going to be the case. Guardian shuts it down. Five rounds on the board for FaZe as they bring themselves back into this half. Cloud9 are back on the buy once again. Skadoodle on the sniper rifle. Good grenades as well, so if they've got more executes in mind, they're well prepared for it. But they may want to try and take out a player or two first. And FaZe Clan have changes of their own. Olofmeister making his way to that short smoke. 
and they haven't been too aggressive phase in the middle position so far. We haven't seen this kind of play from them, so this could take Cloud9 off guard, but there's three of them there. How does Olof Meister get more than one? I think he's got to get two kills in this situation. Trying to figure out where they are. There's Tarek. Now the re-aggression comes in from Skadudo. He gets two for one. That's exactly what he needed. And this is pretty big for FaZe. They can now play very passively if they choose to do so. They have the man advantage. Cloud1 is forced in this position to try to make plays, and that's exactly what Rush is up to. Able to find a good timing onto Guardian. That's a massive kill. And now FaZe, again, they have some decisions to make. They could just hold some decent positions, some safe positions, and wait for Cloud9 to plant the bomb. Now, there's a safe way to play this. Nico gathering information as he can towards Connector, and Cloud9 using the clock to their advantage. It's Dewey around the uh, B apartments. And while there's 40 seconds left for Cloud9, they, their positions are, are not amazing. It looks like it's going to be the B split. And this is maybe one of the best decisions with Guardian down. Of course, almost everybody on phase can uh, make plays with the AWP, especially with a smoke on the connector. What do FaZe make of these grenades? Either way, it's Carrigan alone towards the B site. He's got 20 seconds. He just needs to delay for as long as possible. What can he do? Not much on this occasion. Bomb's got to go down fast. Still big opportunity here for FaZe as they come in from Market and Apartments. Nico and Rain, two of the most godlike players you could ask for in this position. The bomb only freshly planted. There's time for this. They have kits. And a single flash on Rain, he could give his position away by throwing it from apartments, but that will allow Nico out. Nico's activated, but now he's the only chance for FaZe. He delivers one, but still two to go. And they are playing the angles. This will be so difficult. There's nothing Nico can do in that position. Shut down by Cloud9 and their remainder. As one more round is picked up by them. We'll see if that's true as it continues. Can they rev the engine once more? Four round lead to Cloud9, and we move into the last round of the first half. They have the money to buy, and that was a great recovery from Cloud9. Again, Olaf Meister and had to get two kills, gets two kills, but Cloud9 able to make the three on three and then convert afterwards. Rush. Uh, once his teammate went down, he actually fired some shots just to, just to bait. He conceded his position, but he did, they don't know where the trade fragger is, so it worked out well for Cloud9. Four oh. people towards the A site with the bomb. Tarek in the middle position. Guardian spamming. Might be another fast one from Cloud9. Yeah, they're definitely liking it. Another change of pace from them. Faze, they don't have the info just yet, but they do have Nico in a very good position. Nico might get cut off from his teammates due to the smokes of Cloud9 as they attack the site. It's a great pick off from Tarek as well, but still, there are chances here for FaZe. Guardian's watching the cross to short. That's information they know. Say, oh, Nico goes down straight away. That was maybe the only chance, but Guardian comes back in. Oh, Guardian, he gets two. There's still more to go, though. Cloud9 must plant the bomb. The peaks come in, but Guardian will not stop. One more to go, and Guardian gets them all. What the hell was that last shot from Guardian? I told you, he is the problem Cloud9 have to deal with. You don't have smokes, Guardian's alive. You've got serious issues, man. Serious, serious issues. Guardian is the problem for Cloud9 on Mirage. Six to nine will be the score in favor of Cloud9. Nasty stuff from Guardian. Repositioning while the cooldown of the scope is there. So smart, so fast, so dangerous. What is that? He isn't in the Matrix, James. He is the Matrix right now. It's unbelievable watching him play. I mean, he's been doing stuff like this all tournament long. The consistency into the grand final stage has been remarkable. And it's also very exciting considering what we've already seen from Skadoodle as well. His counterpart in this grand finals. So here it, here it is, the second pistol round. Cloud9 won the first, of course. FaZe will be looking to do the same, of course. But they're going for the A site, unlike Cloud9, who fancy themselves on B. Can they get the openings? Well, there's one. Not landing the mark, he needed to get some kills there. So many opportunities, and Cloud9 have been eliminated on the A side. Rotation is here, but someone's looking for it. His name is Carrigan. He's got a P250 for the extra range. Don't think he's sort of player in connector. Rain gets taken down. Three versus two. And Carrigan needs to uh, get to work. Although I think he's waiting to play the bomb while his teammates are still containing the situation. There isn't a kit on these last two players. Maybe there's one on eight. Oh, there's one in TPL, and Automatics picked it up. Can he get the bomb defused, though? Two more T's to find. Nico on the plant pot. Carrigan simply waiting for the beep beep of the bomb. Slowly emerging now. 
Is he going to... Oh, Operation Human Shield not going to work out. And FaZe take the pistol. 9-9 nine, nine looking very likely. Great comeback here from FaZe. Able to really create what could now be a completely open game. They've evened things up from the idea of splitting pistols at the very least. And they can start with a good economy. However, the question is, can they do what Cloud9 did? And win back-to-back -back rounds with extreme aggression and efficiency. We saw great use of utility from Cloud9 on their T side, and from FaZe will be looking to see the same. Olaf Meister Ooh. actually getting a nasty tag there from one of the scouts. Have to be very careful facing mid against these scouts, especially with the missed smoke. Two tags. Guardians being tagged now as well, and that is not a way to start. 1 minute 35 on the clock, and they, FaZe are already in serious trouble. There are no grenades, no flashes, no smokes for Cloud9, but they're all still alive. They can re reset the positions of those two scouts and cause yet more problems for FaZe. You have to say Mirage is a must win for Cloud9. They would love to win this force by. This is quite tense here for FaZe. Still a 5v5. Lots of dangerous guns lurking around as Skadoodle has the angle. Three tags from the scouts. Everybody is nice and softened up. To be knocked down by those CZs that are lying awake on the respective bomb sites. Tarek with the other scout as well. This could go very wrong for FaZe. But can they somehow get onto a site and, and evade these pistols and plant that bomb? That could that's what they really need to do here. Get the site, get the post plant. But I'm not sure this is going to happen for them, James. I like this off angle from Tarek. Tarek is a dentist on a B-bomb site and he's looking to pull teeth. But he's using crude instruments to do it. There's another tag. Surely there's no way FaZe can do this. They've got to be running to their doom. These scouts are going nuclear. Tarek has done so much damage. And Guardian's got to run away, but he can't. They don't get a single kill in that anti-force fight. That is incredible, and I think, wasn't it a missed smoke in the middle window that allowed for the first couple tags? And then it just compounded, just kept getting worse. They try to go for that full B apartments rush, and sometimes you see that sort of out of desperation, out of fear from... I mean, sure, you're not going to take any hits, but as soon as you try to explode out the apartments, that is so difficult to do without perfect grenades, and... Now FaZe have to look towards the future here. They force my back, looking to put the aggression on. Carrigan. Playing around the smoke here in the middle, looking for a fast play to connect her. And he finds a good timing! There's the frag! But there's the refrag. Automatic, doing his job, keeping it cool in middle. And that's been reclaimed now by Cloud9, as there are only two pistols left for FaZe. Guardian has not force bought with his team. Doesn't always, but they know how crucial that AWP is on the buy, on the, uh, buy round for FaZe Clan. He needs that as soon as possible. They'll approach it safety first. Now, Guardian is the last man standing. And all places to plant the bomb are covered. There's even a flank in B apartment. So Cloud9 are pretty comfortable for the time being. See if he can get a deagle shot off. Almost, but not quite. No plant for FaZe Clan. Cloud9 building up a really nice score on Mirage. It does start to get scary because with a, a buffer of some rounds to work with, that does decrease overall risk to then allow you to think, well, actually, we can take plays which are a bit risky. We can take some hits. We've got the economy to back us up. And when Cloud9 get the freedom to be dangerous like that, I mean, it was mentioned on the desk, they have an incredibly explosive team, a lot of firepower. So if they have that freedom to roam the map on Mirage, it is a very tough thing to deal with for FaZe. Scar is up close here with the MP9. He could be in for quite the money-making mission. He's going to just grind them all down with the MP9. Money in the bank for Skadoodle. Skadonglers making that cash, baby. $9,300. He's flossing that. And there's Tarek. Skadoodle, such an awesome guy. Very shy, but really cool. Used to beatbox for nothing but nothing rats on a Cloud9 team. It's Tarek egging on the crowd. So here it is. The buy round is here for FaZe Clan. Guardian has the AWP. They're all very dangerous, but I'm looking towards their sniper to do the big damage. FaZe Clan, not shy to do a fast execute just as Cloud9 have been doing. How will it work out for them though? Cloud9 starting with three people around the middle area, but they're quickly rotating towards A. 
will take the site fast. Oh, quick play through the smoke there. That's not going to go too well for automatic. Rush getting eliminated by CT as well. A 3v5 retake. Sure, there are grenades for Cloud9, but the numbers, that's something you really need. And in this position, the flank is so incredibly important to do the damage. That is the play that can start to split the attention of the defenders on the site, and that could get the other players for Cloud9 going. As oh, Stewie goes down in the back, and that might be the chances now. They're going to have to go for the save. You can see that it all rested on the action in Palace from Stewie. And now Skadoodle, a bit of a shooting range as he tries to escape. He will be hunted by the Ravenous Phase players. That was clearly a, uh, a nasty surprise for Automatic, but let's see if Skadoodle can hold on to this AWP. Olaf Meister is charging through B apps at the moment, and Skadoodle will be exposed from the back. Turns the corner, presence of mind from Skadoodle, so he will hold on to that for the, at the very least. But you saw Automatic running through the smoke. I think he probably expected there to be the normal smokes which covers the site, but no, they were left exposed, so he goes in and gets annihilated. They will have to pay FaZe Clan more respect. Seems FaZe have some surprises in store as well. Now Cloud9, they've picked up the second sniper rifle. Often in this situation, you'll see Tarek go into B apartments. And once he has an angle through towards the stairs into the underpass, he will stay there alone. But he's towards A and Skadoodle's towards B. So I do wonder if it'll be a change. This may be spawn dependent, as you can see from Tarek's position in the palace. First kill there towards the underpass position. But Tarek gets the kill. There's no one to refrag for Tarek. Or against Tarek, that is. As the smoke will cover his retreat on the slope position. So the teams go one to one. Half nine, actually really, I would say, in a good position when it, you know, it happens like this. They're a bit vulnerable with these big A takes that we saw previously because they don't like to sit and wait to go and play full retake like, let's say, an SK does. They want to fight. And they definitely have a fight on their hands very soon. Tarek, oh, he misses the shot. Big for FaZe. Rush is completely exposed in the triple position and Cloud9 are getting wiped out. Once again, Skadoodle's going to try and do anything he can. Maybe picking off some of these players just to make it easier for him to save, but the bomb hasn't gone down just yet. So if he gets another kill here, I think carrigan has got to be careful with his peaks. 12 to 9. Looks likely at this point. Automatic got taken out early in that round. He made a play in the underpass, which I think part was part of the aggression for the sniper in B apartments as well, but didn't quite work out for Cloud9. It's so important for them to kill Skadoodle right now, because if he can carry the AWP into the next round, I mean, we've seen his form so far in this game. It can absolutely change the round if he's in the right place at the right time, but they'll slowly creep in. They want to guarantee the trade. Rain finds an unknown angle, a blind spot, and he'll take full advantage. 4K from Rain in that round. And uh, now that the sides have changed, I think Rain is definitely one to watch in the Go TV as well. Skadoodle 20 for 10 at the moment. But it's automatic lighting up the scoreboard of 22 kills. Tactical timeout from Cloud9. Three round lead at the moment. Very likely to have to concede this round. So they may, uh, I do wonder if they'll try and keep up the aggressive pace on the CT side. The last few buy rounds, they've lost a player early, very, very quickly indeed. And that's not really ideal when you're on the counter terror side and your money is lacking. So we shall see. But for now, there'll be a few pistols, a few grenades. Just the one smoke, it seems. But Tarek has bought a tape. That is awesome. It's the first time I actually used it in the show match earlier. It's pretty good, James. $200. Can get a kill with it. Fantastic. But I was surprised, actually, about the fervor from Cloud9 when they were faced with the A set piece from FaZe Clan and they decided, you know, Automatic was the first man through the smoke. Instead of just waiting it out, they had full grenades on everyone, basically, very early in the rounds. And it's usually pretty favorable for the CTs to go full retake. So I wonder if that will be an adjustment we'll see from Cloud9. They don't have too many rounds in advantage to play with at this point. And FaZe, we can imagine them taking this a bit more cautiously. Some of these, these rounds against Eagles and CZs have not gone so, uh, so well for them. Guardian. He's got to be careful. That's this is basically what I do every match, but with a knife. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So he'll choose the taser. I tried the taser once, didn't work for me. You've probably seen that on uh, the Reddit as well. 1 minute 20 for FaZe Clan. Fortunately for them, there aren't many smoke grenades here for Cloud9, just the one. We've seen it be quite a pain on rounds such as this. Rain having a look, but he's not going to go crazy in the A site. Doesn't know if there's a stack there, but that's a nice opening kill. Every round can be dangerous, especially when the likes of Rush has a CZ. Very nice bait there from Rain. 
or rather from his teammate in Palace. The range get a kill. And this is beautiful. Great round from face. Just very slowly, as you said, James, just clearing angles, just one at a time. Playing the information, keeping these eagles at arm's length. And Stewie. Ooh, there you go. That's a nice crack. Looks for the follow up, but he can't find it. Phase now, 10 rounds on the board. And they're two away from Cloud9 that have looked, I mean, Cloud9 have looked very dominant in some of these, uh, in the, at least in the first half. So it's really cool to see that Phase have been holding on. They're showing a great deal of resilience here, and they're not losing confidence. It was, uh, that, last, that, that last eagle shot was pretty cool from Stewie. He didn't get the kill, but he was so patient to wait for the cooldown to take the shot. It just shows how focused he is, which is great, because you do wonder if Cloud9 is starting to feel the pressure now. Back on the double snipers again for the CT side. Skadoodle almost getting teased there with a potential shot. He'll be uh, focusing on mid on his own for the time being, but Automatic will be coming in from the short B position. We see Stewie. He will hear that grenade is being deployed very close. He's expecting a play to come through. Some spray from both sides. This could be a position of variance. Here's the reload. Tries to punish the reload, but doesn't work out. Rain gets the bullets in just in time. And this is kind of scary right now. Tyrek will get a frag there onto Guardian. And that's, that is going to be fantastic, of course, for Cloud9. But the problem is they have no grenades, actually. And the, sort of, the kind of the saving grace for Cloud9 in this position with no utility is the fact that they have AWPs. That can kind of make up for it. They've abandoned the B-bomb site, Cloud9. They are gambling on it being an A play. Automatic keeping an eye on short. Guardian was taken out towards the apartments earlier, and it might be that Cloud9 re that when Guardian's in the apps, it's probably going to be an A play. So they seem confident on that. They've got three people just waiting there, and Automatic, he will be able to flank these players later on. But how long will they just hold Cloud9? How much are they believers in their analyst? Pushing through, understands this distraction at play. He can get a free push through the smoke. Skadoodle's done. Rush is done. Only automatic left alive for Cloud9 to try and survive with this M4. And he knows that if he holds an off, he can potentially get a kill and fall back and be safer. But Olaf Meister figures, that, figures it out very quickly. Now, this is a problem for Cloud9. They knew what FaZe were going to do, and FaZe did it anyway. There's only one round between these two teams, so it's now... I don't even know if you can say they need to adjust because they knew what was going to happen, but they still couldn't stop it. So that is uh, that does not bode well. It's 11 to 12, Cloud9 are on an eco. Can they stop FaZe from taking the lead? That's the question. I mean, does they're going to have a good buy on the, on the next round, so do they have to go for a, an aggressive play? Do they have to pick somebody off early? If they, if they can't... If they can read FaZe and still not stop them, then... Maybe they have to do one better. Well, everyone's just got wiped out, James. <laughs> Pretty much, as you finish the sentence. Very big challenge in the middle there. A challenge that FaZe was very happy to welcome with their superior firepower. And now we'll go to an even game. 12 to 12. FaZe have really found their groove now. And it does seem to be Cloud9 that is indeed having a lot of problems. And. The last buy run they had with the, with the double orbs. Again, it was a round where they didn't have much utility. They tried to make a push and pit with the uh, with Stewie. That didn't go too well for them. So the question now is what they'll decide to do. Cloud9. Lots of options with double orb to go aggressive if they want to. But it's actually FaZe that have taken the timeouts. Yeah, Tarek and um, Skadoodle both have the forward spawns with the rifles. So, with the sniper rifles, sorry. So I think we're going to see that normal strat from Cloud9 where Tarek goes into the B apartments, although Skidoodle's heading towards A, so maybe Tarek goes into mid. But what we've commonly seen in this major in the previous weeks is Tarek in apps holding a line through the apartments, and then they have extra people towards the A site. Obviously, FaZe may expect that because I'm sure they would have studied each other. Ooh, they're going four on the A site. Nobody in mid. So maybe Scar's going towards connector. Indeed, he is. So Tarek will be using his grenades to get into position. There's the smoke from Skidoodle. He does want to get aggressive, but Tarakan's made his way towards the boxes already. Leaving the responsibility of B to Tarek. Has been having a great tournament as well. With an AWP, he can definitely cause some issues here for FaZe. As they start to slow things down after the initial grenades exchanged around middle. Skidoodle's still looking for stuff from Connector. Won't see anything though. He's, in fact, he hasn't really seen any, a single player. Only seen a smoke so far. That really goes for both teams. Pace has slowed right down here. Once again, we start to see these smokes going into B. 
There for the pillars for the other position. Tarek's now on high alert. Are they going to commit to this though? The bomb is there, but they haven't jumped into the apartments yet. I'm not convinced because of how they are laid out elsewhere. Oh, the flash is there and Tarek tries to regress, but they're not committing to that. Trades elsewhere. Race, will he take the close left? He won't. Does the bomb go back towards the B bomb site? There's still nobody there. Three on the A site and they're slowly wondering, have we, we were supposed to pull the rotation. So can we push this now? Because there should be people here. That's the whole point of our fake. But that's all they have left as a choice. Nico lurking in Palace and there are still two people just waiting in A. Stewie's gone to find out, and who better to go and look for that information? I think Stewie's on the flank, and FaZe Clan is still creeping forward. Do they wait for Nico to activate to find out what's going on elsewhere? This could get really weird for FaZe Clan. Yeah, this is very scary indeed. They're not really going to anticipate the positioning of Stewie. That's a very, very big play that he can make, but he's got to make sure he plays off his teammates. He ha they have loads of time. They have loads of time to set up, but there's an opportunity. Stewie goes for it straight away and gives away his position. But still, he has two teammates to play off of who are coming into the market area now. And it's going to be Guardian holding the angle with the AWP. We have little reason to doubt him and his ability in this match. Oh, that's big. And with Stewie gone in the Palmas, Guardian only has to face in one direction. That's something that he knows. His teammates gather the, the info for him to understand this. And that bomb is starting to be very close to detonation. Olaf Meister with the off angle. And there seems to be nothing that Cloud9 can do. Oh boy. That really could have gone either way. If Guardian doesn't jump there, I do wonder if Cloud9 win the round. I was curious because I thought maybe he jumps into apartments, holds the line towards the market position. So uh, if, if, Cloud, if he doesn't jump or if Stewie lands that shot, I think either way, Cloud9 probably win. But Guardian is such a problem. He is such a problem on Mirage. He is the mystery that you have to solve if you want to win. FaZe Clan now in the lead, 13 to 12. How many rounds has it been for FaZe Clan? It's been six rounds in a row for the guys on the T side. Six rounds in a row. It does not look very good for Cloud9 here on Mirage. And again, Cloud9 will have to summon a lot of inner strength because it's been eight maps that they've played against FaZe in the past and eight maps they've lost. It's not a good record, but again, this stands to be a new reinvigorated Cloud9. Tarix back at it again with that scout in middle. Trying to get some cheeky headshots through the smoke. Unavailable to him so far though. As Nico asks some questions around the pit position and ooh, some sound cues given away, but Nico will miss the shot. Cloudmine have got really good positions at the moment, considering they have CZs, because they've got one player in Palace. They've just traded on ramp and uh, Automatic is in B apps as well. He hasn't gone too deep, but Cloudline could really push forward and be in surprising positions across the map. And that could be a massive issue for FaZe Clan. So he's, um, he might have a shadow advantage there, but look at Guardian. He's so smart, he has such knowledge. But if Stewie plays his cards right, if his timing is correct, then uh, this may become a winnable round. That said, Rush is moving away from the A site because Stewie hasn't found any information yet. And I think at this point, someone might have to take a risk for Cloud9. Maybe automatic. One play spotted in Connector. Surely that will send Rush back towards uh, CT. Timing there coming in from Stu is Skadoodle occupies some attention and they make the desperate dash to the bomb site to get the plant. Stewie can't fail, but he will. That is a big chance gone for Cloud9, but still, Rush with the AK looking for more engagements here. And they are understanding of his position. So it's very hard for him to move forwards now. He does have Kevlar, but again, you really want Skadoodle here to try to create distraction to allow some move to be made by Rush. Otherwise, they're just going to be staring at his position and there's no way in and eventually Guardian will have at him. And that is Rush gone. And the round claimed by FaZe. Two away from winning map one. Once again, this is the pick of Cloud9. Overpass is coming afterwards. Cloud9, how much is left in the tank? Their next buy is coming in. And it could be their last big buy on Mirage. Rain slowly creeping up, Scar, he's not checking deep enough, he's gonna lose the AK, or is he? He'll, he will hold on to that, maybe goes to Stewie, maybe goes to Automatic. Rain just sweeping the entire site, looking everywhere, not leaving anything to chance. And we've spoken so much about Cloud9, but what does this mean for FaZe, this grand final? It is, I mean, that's the thing, like, they are coming into this as, as described as the great favourites, the super team that worked. But a super team with all the accolades except the, the major final trophy. The big one. 
Stewie will be on the sniper rifle. I think the big red Stewie button has been activated where he is the aggressive sniper. Face Clan moving quickly into the A site once again. The smoke's being deployed. Can Cloud9 react to this? Ooh, that is an amazing frag from Rain. Great presence of mind to check through the smoke. And look for that position. Now, once again, FaZe, they've occupied this site. Previously, we saw Cloud9 desperate to push in, and they didn't use the force of the grenades, but now they're taking it slower. Now they're playing more of a retake game. But there are players dispersed everywhere. Skadula's gonna hit the shot. He misses, though. Olofweiser finds a surgical headshot, and now it's just two left here for Cloud9. Things are looking stretched. Things are looking desperate. And things are nearly looking done here for them in this map, as now FaZe are on 15. Started well for Cloud9, but now we are at breaking point. They will have some rifles going into the next round. Rain, look at that. I don't even know if he saw anything. He's just one of the smartest players in the world. That's why he's top five. 15 to 12. Map point for FaZe on the pick of their opponent. Cloud9 getting really aggressive towards the ramp. They need to hear you guys! They're against map point here on their own pick. Cloud9 putting four around A. Attack, the best form of defense. Faze going quickly up short here. Brush and Tarek finding fresh. Get through over the smoking connector. Finds himself one as well. Tarek with the spot! Ooh, that is a great catch from Rain. Now, how much can Rain do? We've seen him in these positions before. There's one more. He might have to just go for it here with the plant, but he will still play it patiently. He knows he has time. The clock is on his side for the time being. Quick smoke here to offer up some additional cover as Cloud9 makes sure to set up the trade. 2v1 against Rain. Can they make it work? Yes, they can. Absolutely they can, but it's still not over. They're fighting for overtime. Two more rounds. Two more rounds. FaZe Clan is still going to have a good buy, but we saw in that round, we saw the grenade towards the ramp. Cloud9 are expectant of FaZe charging into the A site. Will FaZe make the same play? No, they won't. Four people moving away from A and Nico deploying some grenades. Maybe FaZe have more surprises in store. Skadoodle. Spotted around Connector. He will continue to be a threat whether he stands there or not, but he better not re-aggress because Guardian is alive and he's hungry for frags. And smoking off that Molotov does suggest that he may go for a play. Obviously, we can see that that's not really the case, but that will waste time. It will waste additional utility here from FaZe. It's good to see Skadoon not making the mistake of actually peering over it in that instance. Guardian was waiting for it, but now it's on phase as Cloud9 has not really offered anything. Oh! Wow! Sees the traces, and that's all he needs. Carrigan making a fast play. They're going for the B split now. Skadoodle will surely see in time. No, just about not. Or just about. Tarek will take him down. He's still alone towards the B bomb site, and there are three people above him. Buying time for his team. Down goes the bomb. Two more in apartments. The rotation has to come in fast for Cloud9. There's a flank in the apartment from Stewie as well. And who better? Guardian alone. That's a massive shot from Guardian. But just the one kill. One more round! FaZe Clan take a timeout. And I think it's both teams that need that timeout. Intense situation for everyone here. A breather, a moment to get on the same page. And to figure out exactly the approach into this last round. It's so incredibly important. Cloud9 have found their feet, they've found their groove. The momentum is back with them. It was gone for so long, it looked like it was over, but they have managed to summon the strength against the titans of FaZe Clan. Freeze time has begun, and we're into the final round of regulation on map number one. One more round. Where's the home field advantage? Double snipers again. This time, Tarek is going to be picking it up. Styles make fights, and Cloud9 keep changing the styles of these snipers. See if it works out this time. Skadoodle close. Olaf Meister better hide behind those boxes. 
phase plan with four people towards the B bomb site. And who's waiting for them? It's Tarek, forced away. And again, he's on his own. They know they're focusing on the A site. The smoke's down towards short. Does he make a play through? Stewie is here. There are smokes everywhere. Does he have the right angles? Down goes Nico. The bomb's getting planted quickly, but the flags are frying free for everyone. Skadoodle on the site. Can he find a short player? Yes, but can he go back? No, misses the shot. Three versus three, the bomb is down. Automatic still on the A, a site for some reason. Maybe looking for a lurker. This is absolute time. The smoke's going away. And now it's Olof Meister with the sniper. There's Guardian. Automatic on his own. Running up the short position. I think Olof Meister's heard him. Which means that they can all hold angles. The smoke fake. The flash fake won't work out. Face Clan take the first map of this series. This is absolutely unbelievable. Two incredibly momentum-based teams, and that is exactly what map one was. It was all about that momentum. It started off like fire from Cloud9, but soon that fire was extinguished as FaZe got themselves back into the board. And I didn't think that they could do it. And the same for Cloud9, but eventually FaZe managed to take it, and this means a lot, James. This was Cloud9's pick. FaZe are one map away from the major title. And if Cloud9 are going to do this, it's going to have to be the hard way. That was their map. That was their map. But now it's FaZe's map. They'll come back onto Overpass. Thoughts of the desk after the break. <laughs>